The second question from Muhammad Yunus, Mumbai, India. MashaAllah, you have a family of Daif. What would be the criteria you would look for while selecting a life partner for your son Farik, considering he's also a Daif? Brother Muhammad Yunus has posed the question that what would I look for a life partner if I have to choose a life partner for my son Farik who's a Daif? Number one, the choice will depend on my son, not on me. Because my son would be leading a life with his wife. He should select the right one. But naturally, I being a father can give guidelines because of experience. If I was to guide my son, and you are already aware of the criteria, and we discussed this many times, Alhamdulillah, we are on the same wavelength. And the reason is because of my wife. Whatever my son today is, and my daughters, maximum credit, you could say 80% or more, goes to my wife. And I pose this question very often, that when is the latest you would like to plan for the future of your son? So some people say, you know, I would like to plan maybe when my son goes to university or my daughter goes in university some people say when she would go to college some would say in school some would say i would plan for my children when they enter nursery but the islamic method is and the islamic criteria is that the latest you plan not the earliest latest is when you select a life partner when you select a life partner then you're planning how would you want your children so i wanted my children to become dais that's the reason i selected a daya i wanted them to be religious that is the reason I selected a religious girl. And today, most of the people think that my children are Da'is and Alhamdulillah, I had in the field of Da'wah and Islam, Alhamdulillah, is because of me. If percentage-wise I have to give marks, I would say 80% is due to my wife. Alhamdulillah. My guidelines are there, my support is there, everything is there, but the credit goes to my wife. Now coming to the question, what are the criteria that I would see or look for in a life partner for my son Farik who's a Dai. As I mentioned in my early answer, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 7, hadith number 5090, and the same hadith is repeated in Sahih Muslim, volume number 4, hadith number 3635, Abu Huraira may Allah be pleased with him said, that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, that women are chosen for four things in marriage. When you marry a woman, you look for four things. Wealth, lineage, nobility, beauty, and religion. Choose her for her religion. So the Prophet said, though people look for four things in a life partner while choosing a woman for marriage. Wealth, lineage, beauty, and religion. Choose her for a religion. The best is religion. And as I mentioned earlier, that I would tell my son that while choosing a life partner, see to it that you give 95% weightage to religion. The other three are time bound mainly for worldly things. Religion, Haddeen is for the Akhirah and for this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that if you seek for this world, Allah will give you this world, but not the Akhirah. If you seek for Akhirah, Allah will give you Akhirah and this world. As far as the wealth is concerned, I would not like my son to use the wealth of his wife for the living. He should be a man, he should look after himself. He is a Qawwam. So what difference does it make whether the girl is rich or poor? So as far as the wealth is concerned, there is no weightage at all. Only thing you should be careful that poorer she is, the better it is. The richer she is, it is difficult. But if she is extremely rich, then you have to be careful. If she is extremely rich and used to that luxury of life, she may be a billionaire's daughter, then I would say, be careful. Unless her deen is 100 out of 100, then maybe she would not care for the wealth that she has. But otherwise, if she's too wealthy, you have to be careful, you may not be able to take care of her. 
So poorer the better. So the weightage for the wealth is zero. But only be careful that she's not extremely rich. If she's poor the better. If she's normal also no problem. Rich also no problem. But not too rich or excessively rich. Point number two. The lineage or the family. I would say that makes no difference. But if she's coming from a very religious family, it may carry a very small, maybe half percent weightage according to me. If it is good, but whether it is or not, the deen is more important. Some people from the very good family may not be good. We have the examples of children of the ambiyas, of messengers, who are mushriks. We have examples of children of mushriks who became messengers. So we have both these examples. So lineage is important, but not that much. I would hardly give any weightage to that. Maybe half percent. As far as beauty, she should not be repulsive, but natural, my son should like her. And beauty differs. It's in the eye of the beholder and everything is in the mind. So I would say, okay, you can give about maybe three or four percent marks for beauty. Ninety-five percent minimum should be for thee. This is what I would guide him and this is what I believe, even he believes in this. Regarding the criteria and the requirement, but natural, the basic requirements that a Muslimah should be. In the criteria, I would have eight criteria which are compulsory. Number one, she should be a practicing Muslimah following Islam as per the glorious Quran and the Sahih Hadith. And she should do all the farais. I repeat, the first criteria and the most important is she should be a practicing Muslimah who follows Islam as per the teachings of the glorious Quran and the Sahih Hadith and she should do all the farayid. All the farayid means all. She should have Tawheed, she should have Taqwa, she should pray five times a day, she should give Zakat if she has to give, she should fast in the month of Ramadan, if she has to do Hajj, she should do it. Hijab and all these can speak for us together. Number two, she should abstain from all the haram activities, all the major sins, all the minor sins, as much as possible, but natural, if it's one or two minor sins, no human being can say that he does not sin at all. But abstain from all the major sins, abstain from all the sins if possible, almost all. Number three, she should be virtuous and do as much as mustahab as much as sunnah of the beloved Prophet Third is a virtuous girl who follows as much as sunnah of the Prophet does as much as mustahab what is recommended in the Quran and Sahih Hadith. That is her taqwa level should be high. Believe in Tawheed. Besides the five times salah, she should offer the tajjud salah. She should Pray the Sunnah the Mokada, the Sunnah the Gair Mokada. She should give charity besides the Far Zakat, besides fasting in the month of Ramadan. She should fast the day of Arafah, fast the first nine days of Zillajah, the three days of Muharram, 9, 10, 11. She should keep the sixth fast of Shawwal. She should fast three days the Ayamul Bid every month. She should fast on Monday and Thursday, and so on and so forth as much as of the mustab as possible, as much as virtuous as possible. And this you can speak for us together on the third point alone. The fourth point is she should have the passion for dawa and spreading the message of Islam amongst the Muslims and non-Muslims. Passion for dawa and spreading the Islamic teachings. Fourth point. Fifth point she should encourage and support her husband, that is my son, for doing dawah completely. That means she should support in all the dawah activities of my son. She should completely support and encourage and help him in all his dawah activities. Number six, she should be willing to lead a simple life which is non-luxurious. Inshallah, my son's life is quite comfortable. But if required for the sake of Islam, she should be able to sacrifice all comforts. Seventh, she should be fluent in English because my son 
is fluent in English and you would want her to be fluent in English. The eighth is she should be willing to settle in Malaysia or wherever my son would shift. But his plan is to stay and live in Malaysia. So she should be willing to settle in Malaysia. These are the eight compulsory criteria. If I would mention the criteria for selecting life partner for my son. As far as the criteria which are very important but not compulsory, number one would be I would want her to be fluent in Fusa Arabic. The classical Arabic, the Arabic of the Quran, she should be fluent in that. The reason is that I would want my children to be fluent in Arabic. My son knows Arabic fluently, Fusa. I would want his wife to know so that the children are fluent in English and Arabic both. Number two, she should be Adaya. She should propagate Islam to the non-Muslims and the Muslims. Number three, she should have a bachelor's degree in any of the Islamic studies. Whether it be Islamic studies in general or in Sharia or in Quran or in Hadith. These are preferable, not compulsory. If little bit is less or more, no problem, but preferable. The third is bachelor's in Islamic studies. The fourth is, I would also want her to be a Hafiz al Quran. My son is Hafiz, I would want to be Hafiz so that the children also are Hafiz. And being Hafiz is preferable for Rujdawa. Number five, she should be associated with an Islamic organization. And number six, that she should have watched many of the English speaking dais so that she knows what is dawa and what is the surrounding atmosphere. So these are the six additional points which are not compulsory but preferable. If one is missing or a little bit less, doesn't matter, but there are eight compulsory points and there are six highly recommended preferable points that I would look for in a life partner for my son. These are the main criteria. The addition, of course, is there that there are many additional points. For example, the culture should match and the other things are there. You can't expect a Chinese to live with an African. Then, if the first eight criteria are 95 and above in marks and if the additional point six are very good, then the other things can be compromised. The culture differs between the people. So these things are which are secondary and tertiary. But the first compulsory points I've mentioned eight, then the six points, and then other points are later on. So this was in brief what I would look for in a life partner for my son Farid. Hope that answers the question.